Welcome back to Gold Element Auto Works. This is the 1983 380SCC Eurospec. Any of the early W126 uh, chassis or models should have a similar setup for the radios. Again, this is a 1983 380SCC. This is the radio removal process. It's very simple. It's less complicated than the US spec later year uh, 560SCC. So this is again the early years 80. If you have a similar uh, center console and radio setup, then this is how you remove the radio. First off, you have two Phillips head screws right there. Pull the ashtray out, remove this right here. It just, this just slides out, it lifts up and slides out and it will expose the two screws. Remove those. Okay, they are now removed. Upon removal, those two screws closes back tilt it and it comes right out you might have to uh, work your lever your, your shift knob a little bit just pull it down a little bit down like that i'm sorry a little bit down like this you don't necessarily have to put it in the reverse just give it a little bit of space and pull up then here you have to disconnect the cigarette lighter okay so now that that's removed this is the plug for the cigarette lighter and this is the illumination light that also comes out. You turn it, I believe I turned it clockwise in order to remove it. Maybe counterclockwise. Either way, turn it, pull it out, it comes on out. There's some additional wiring here for the uh, aftermarket security alarm system that was installed back in the 80s. Now, to remove the radio is real simple. Up under here, you see these clips. There's one here that you pull down like this. Okay, so this clip right here is what holds the radio in. There's one here and there's one here. It takes two hands, so I have to put the phone down, but you pull down the spring-loaded clip, you pull down like that on both sides, and the radio will pull straight out. All right, so it took a little bit of wiggling, but if you release one side and, and pull that side out, and then release the other side, it comes out evenly. But you have to get your hand up underneath there to try to you know leverage it so that you can get enough grip to pull as you're releasing one of the clips. So stick your hand in there, the smaller hands. If you have smaller hands, it's easier to do. But stick it up under there. Grab the radio however you can and pull out. This might require you to move the lever a little bit. Make sure your e-brake is applied or make sure your foot is on the brake when you do this so that the car doesn't move. All right, there you go. Radio's out. Make sure you put it back in park. All right. For those of you looking for the instructions on how to remove the center climate control panel on a 1983 380 SEC, the early model W126, here you go. Up under here, there are not two screws like in other cases. All the other W126s have two screws right here. You remove, you pull it out about an inch, pull it down, and it releases. Not on these. If you have this setup for your climate control, pop these out, take these off. Mine have obviously already been loosened. And then this piece comes out. Okay? That's how you do it. You don't do it the other way as you do with the other ones. But this is how you do it. Pull it out, pull it down. voila there's wires of course connections on the back side and so carefully pay attention to those if you disconnect anything remember how they were connected if you have to take a picture of the back side but that's how you do it not the other way this way i searched all over the internet and found nothing i figured it out on my own all right there you go you're welcome go element auto works hold on i retract one of my statements and my explanation on how to remove this panel right here for the climate control, uh, there is up underneath two tabs for two screws, but the person did not have them screwed in. You see here, uh, where's that? See these things right here? I don't know. It's like some filler stuff in there and there too. That's where the uh, screws would have been, but they were not there. So, do remove the two screws up underneath the panel. But in order to pull the panel out, you have to take those nuts off of, 
uh, where the climate control knobs are. The climate control, oh, I'm sorry, the um, the fan speed on the left and the, I guess, direction or what vents the air is coming out of on the right. Pull those uh, knobs out, it reveals the nuts and you remove the nuts and then you can pull this off. So remove the two screws up underneath. You can see there those holes and do as I said and you'll be just fine. Here go the plugs removed. Make sure that you know which one goes where. Mercedes is pretty good with making sure the plug only goes in one location with the way that they have the connections situated. All right, their designs, make sure you can't uh, mix them up. So pay attention to that. And if you don't, you should still be okay. Um, they had some additional things hooked up. They had this alarm system hooked up. And so that's why you see some additional uh, wiring or uh, tap, tap, whatever things are called. It allows you to tap into the existing line and run a line from it. So, okay. So why am I doing all this? Because I'm actually uh, retracing the installer, the uh, the alarm system from back in the eighties. I removed all that stuff, but I have wires that are uh, dangling and I want to know where they go to. And this system is pretty complex. Uh, they have wires running all over the place. One went to the defrost switch. One went to the sunroof switch. One went to the uh, hood uh, switch that, that, you know, so that if the hood opens up, the alarm is activated. One went to the trunk. Uh, one went to the door panel. I mean, they're running all over the place. And so I'm just kind of like tracing these things and trying to figure out what goes where. Uh, because once I started disconnecting the system and removing stuff, my flashes and my turn signal stopped working. So there is a wire that I have to find that's supposed to either be grounded or receive power. More than likely grounded, I have to find that wire. That wire ran obviously to the security system and without that wire being uh, connected where it needs to go, my flashes and my turn signals don't work. So I gotta figure that out. The hardest thing to do is to, is to uh, follow somebody else's installation process especially from the 80s. <laughs> it's kind of hard to find a manual on how to install one of these systems, man, that they no longer use. Anyhow, it was a popular system in the 80s. I'm sure if I look hard enough, I'll find something, but I'm just learning as I go, and that's how I, I uh, gain my, my knowledge is through experience. Like this right here went to the horn. Excuse me. Uh, this one right here, this green wire, Ran to this switch right here. Let you know when the trunk was open. I mean, it was a very complex system. Uh, definitely modern technology. Mercedes definitely was ahead of their game using that type of security system for their vehicles. Uh, very, very, very good stuff, man, for the 80s. This is a 1983. I'm always impressed. I didn't want to disassemble this car and do all this, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And this is how you get to know your car. <laughs> This is how you become intimate with your car. Uh, now that I have the radio and everything out, man, I might wind up putting aftermarket radio in here. I was going to keep the factory radio. It's mixing, missing a couple pixels uh, where some of the channels are difficult to read. Uh, and it is from the 80s, so maybe I should update it. I don't know. I'll keep you posted. Oh, Peace boy, out. Look at here, look at here. So up under the passenger, footwell, carpet, firewall, all this stuff down and out all this mess and I find the motherboard or part of it I got a whole lot of stuff regarding this alarm system this is deep it's a lot of stuff to remove to disassemble what somebody took hours to put together goodness somebody paid a lot of money for this system it's a lot of work